Hello there, fellow game developer! You were sent this video to help you with your Unreal Engine onboarding process. Unreal is one of the best known engines in the industry, responsible for next gen advancements such as Nanite, Metahuman, and Lumen, amongst many others. All of this packed in the feature rich and intuitive Unreal Editor, where if you want to delete an asset, you cannot press Enter to confirm your action. It is way more time effective to move your cursor over that red button and click it every single time. But if you change your mind, you can press the escape icon also with your mouse. Because Unreal is all about consistency. And speaking of which, if you're used to a different interface layout from other engines, you can customize Unreal's interface, allowing you to place windows wherever you want them to be. However, you're likely wrong, and you'll be reminded of this when you try to close the engine with unsaved changes. Your custom window placements are now gone, and next time you open the editor, you'll be reminded that you should get used to do things the Unreal way. You can, however, go here, here, and reload your hopefully previously saved layout, as long as you're okay doing that every single time you open the editor. Since 1998, when it was first introduced, the Unreal Engine went through five generational updates over the course of 27 years. That being said, we are not afraid to push boundaries and set new industry standards, such as when you grab the transform gizmo and pull towards yourself, the object naturally goes further. Research has shown that this is most likely what developers want. Unreal Engine is really good at predicting your intentions. For example, if you have a long collision box and you uniformly scale it down, Unreal knows that you actually wanted the cube all along, so it gets rid of those pesky uniform proportions for you. Let's see if you've been paying attention. Quiz time! If you grab the center of this scale gizmo and pull your mouse down, what do you think will happen? That is correct, the object becomes bigger. That's not to be mistaken by that same action, but from this slightly different perspective, in which case the object becomes smaller. It might seem a little difficult, but trust us, this is the unreal way. Let's take perspective out of the equation and go into the 2D viewport. From here, we can pick any camera orientation we want. So let's pick front. You will notice that once you do this, the editor will start aggressively flash at you. This means that you made it angry, but we can easily fix this by changing the light mode. Now that we are in the 2D viewport, we can zoom in a little, but keep in mind that zooming in will get rid of the transform gizmo because good developers should be able to work from afar. However, sometimes the more you zoom in, the more that transform gizmo gets disassembled. It might take a little time, but very soon you'll master exactly what gizmo to use and where. For example, this combined movement gizmo works on this, but not on this, unless you use the other movement gizmo, in which case we're good. Unreal Engine was actually developed by Epic Games, which was founded 34 years ago by Team Sweeney, and it employs over 4,350 people to this day. This is actual footage of one of those developers working on Unreal Engine dragging a selection box to highlight multiple assets, which is something you cannot do in the content browser, because that would be heathen behavior. You can, however, use a selection box to select things in the 2D viewport by simply clicking and dragging. This is a feature we've added sometime in Unreal 1, as you can see on this roadmap. Roughly 15 years later, we decided to also allow you to use this feature in the 3D viewport as well, by requiring you to press an additional hotkey compared to the 2D action. Here at Epic Games, we like to switch around what hotkeys do depending on where exactly on the screen you clicked last time to make sure you're paying attention. Now you know how to drag a selection box in both the 2D and 3D viewports, but of course there is no selection box inside the blueprints viewport because, again, heathen behavior. You have to manually select each individual item on the screen like God intended. Even though it has been 11 years, we still believe that it's not right to be able to use the selection box in neither the blueprint viewport nor the content browser. For that is not the unreal way. 
As you know, in Unreal, you have your main level viewport where you place your game assets, and a very popular type of asset in Unreal are blueprints, which is what is known in the industry as a prefab. Not to be confused with Unreal Blueprints Visual Scripting Language or the Blueprints classes such as Game Modes and Level Blueprints, which are a separate thing from Widget Blueprints. Now, in order to avoid any confusion, all of those are collectively referred to as blueprints in order to keep things clear for new developers. The one that we care about, however, is the prefab meaning of this, which is a collection of multiple assets grouped as one. These prefabs can be edited and they come with their own viewport, where you'll be spending a lot of time manipulating assets around. And if you thought that the level viewport and the prefab viewport would work the same, you are probably a sinful user. Unity user. In our case, if you need to select multiple objects in the level viewport, simply hold shift and click on each object, and they will light up with an orange outline. But in the prefab viewport, you guessed it, shift click doesn't work because that's old news. It's control, and after you select multiple objects, they also light up with the same orange outline. Not all of them though, just some, depending on what type of objects they are. Let's say you want to duplicate these objects. Once you spend a solid minute handpicking all of them, simply press Ctrl D to duplicate, at which point you will notice that the engine deselects all of them but one. So you get the joy of hunting for them here, in the hierarchy panel, where the order of assets and who they are parented to is very important. So when you drag a new asset in here, there is a blue outline, highlighting exactly which component your dragged object will not be placed under because you naturally wanted it to go under whatever you selected three minutes ago. Unreal Engine is not only free to use, but it's also open source, with over 738 contributors on GitHub spending their time by making incremental improvements to the engine. Improvements such as the robust Ctrl Z undo function. Unreal developers love the undo function because it undoes any good feelings that might be distracting in a game development environment. If you're in the level viewport and you accidentally select the wrong thing, it's okay, you can undo and we got you. But if you're in the the prefab viewport, <laughs> you better learn how to stop making mistakes. If your playhead is on a specific animation frame, undo and the playhead is back to frame 1. Now if we move on to an animation montage, actually the timeline is a bit small, so we can simply resize it by finding this blue bar, grab it from anywhere and simply pull up. Mistakes can happen all the time while editing animations. Let's say we want to copy this sound notification here. We click on it, copy, move the playhead where we want to paste, and paste. Oh, sorry, that didn't work because we dragged the playhead from here, instead we should have dragged it from here. Now we can paste and oh, the notification is all the way there. No worries, simply paste again and now it's on the first frame. That happens sometimes all the times. But who knows, you might actually want them there. So if you want to quickly preview your animation, simply hit undo and the animation will start playing on its own. If you want to pause it, simply press space. But don't try to press space in a retargeting animation because space simply doesn't do anything. Or for UI animations, if you select one, space also doesn't do anything. You know, keeping you on your toes. And speaking of UI animations, if you are working on one and made a mistake, undo and you're no longer working on that animation. This is the engine telling you that maybe you should take a break. Now, we can stop here with the first part of this onboarding video, but before we go, remember to save any changes you've made in the editor settings in case you would like to have these preferences synchronized across multiple computers or projects. Once you open the editor settings, you will notice a very convenient export button that exports your settings in a single config file. Per category. So don't forget to go through each of the 79 categories and individually export their settings, otherwise your changes will be lost. And in the unfortunate event of that happening, you can simply reset to defaults, which only works if you happened to press set defaults before you changed anything, otherwise this button does nothing, because setting defaults by default would not be the unreal way. 
This concludes our first Unreal on- Okay, real talk. I've been using this engine for a little over a year and I actually love it. But it's very frustrating how it completely takes you out of your flow state because of silly inconsistencies like the ones in this video, which are like 10% of the kind of problems I've stumbled upon so far. The problem is that developers just get used to these over time and don't see them as problems anymore, while the engine becomes less and less approachable to new users. It's very discouraging to shop for an engine for your next project and end up with this feeling of instability and inconsistency in the tool that you're planning on using for a multi-year complex project that you might financially depend on. I've been keeping huge lists of these problems, so if anyone from Unreal is watching this, please reach out because I would love to help you actually make this engine better. I'll shut up for now, but there might be a second video later.